Good evening. Good evening to all of you, and thank you for being here tonight. Deputy Secretary General Eliasson, Consul General Wagner, Ambassador Braun, Ambassador Posso, our esteemed colleague David Harris, the head of the AJC, the American Jewish Committee, dear friends, tonight is about a celebration of a very significant landmark in our nation's journey. We have moved from the unforgettable horrors of the past to the flourishing friendship and partnership of the present and the future. On March 14, 1960, Chancellor Conrad Adenauer and Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion met at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel right here in New York City. Merely 15 years after the Holocaust, the possibility of a meeting taking place between official representatives of the State of Israel and Germany was not to be taken for granted. For all who cared about Israel, Jews and non-Jews alike, but especially for those who survived the Holocaust, the memory of the war was still fresh and the catastrophe was still echoing loudly and painfully. Yet, at the beginning of 1960, Israeli and West German leaders decided that it was time to engage in a relationship while recognizing that the memory of the Holocaust should never pale. It took another five years until West Germany and Israel established formal diplomatic ties on May 12, 1965. Tonight, we salute these two visionary leaders who demonstrated foresight, courage, and profound understanding of the true essence of leadership. It is much harder to embrace change than to maintain the status quo. Reconciliation requires great strength, resilience, and vision. I dare to say it might be the hardest emotion to gather after any tragedy, all the more so after such an horrific catastrophe as the Holocaust. The fact that today our countries partner in a variety of different endeavors, from military to culture, can be linked to that very moment when two leaders sat in a hotel room in New York City and chose to put the future before the past. Stories of inspiring leadership and courage are entwined within the history of the past 50 years of relationships. Such is the story of the late Ralph Klein. In 1983, Klein, Israel's most prominent basketball coach and a former player himself, received a job offer from the manager of the Kelm Germany German Basketball Club. This was a symbolic and profoundly emotional moment for Coach Klein, who was born in Berlin in 1931 and lost his father in Auschwitz. Klein made history by accepting the offer, and a year later became the first Israeli coach to take on a foreign national team, that of West Germany. Klein led the team to two European Championship tournaments, the 1984 Olympic Games and the 1986 World Basketball Championship. Ralph Klein embodied the bridge that was built between Israel and Germany, between the Israeli people and the German people. It is important to remember that our friendship is not ignorant to its history and its ramifications. When we think of Germany, we carry the memory of the Holocaust and of the six millions who were murdered. I am certain that this is also the case for many Germans when they think of Israel. In his visit to Israel in 1973, Chancellor Willy Brandt of West Germany coined it perfectly. He said, our normal relationship has a special nature. Today, Israel and Germany have successfully normalized their ties. We enjoy a productive and ongoing dialogue in a number 
of fields. It is from the ashes of the past that Israelis and Germans sprouted a wonderful partnership in medicine, science, and trade. Israelis and Germans create things that make the world a better place every day, and they do it together. Tonight, we are marking the victory of our shared values, freedom, democracy, and the dignity of mankind. We are here to celebrate the triumph of good over evil. We are here to say that no conflict is eternal. We are here to demonstrate that the State of Israel, together with, with its friend Germany, are peace-loving nations. Thank you all for being here, and now it gives me great pleasure to invite my co-partner in this event and my colleague, Consul General of Germany in New York, Britta Wagner, please. Good evening, dear Idu Aharoni, Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Jan Eliasson, Ambassador Ron Prosor, Ambassador Harald Braun, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to our celebration of 50 years of diplomatic relations between Germany and Israel. I'm delighted that so many guests found their way to our event tonight. We, who would have thought 50, let alone 70 years ago, that such an event amongst friends would play, take place today? Five years ago, the Israeli President Shimon Peres made a moving appeal against forgetting the past in a speech at the German Bundestag on Holocaust Remembrance Day. He told the story of his beloved grandfather, Rabbi Zvi Melzer. After the National Socialists invaded the town of Vizhnev, they forced all Jewish people inside the synagogue. The rabbi led his congregation, wearing the same prayer shawl that Shimon had wrapped around himself on cold days as a small child. The Nazis locked the doors. The synagogue was set ablaze. Burning ash was all that was left of the entire congregation. At the same time, Shimon Peres spoke about unique friendship between Germany and Israel that had been achieved over the following decades. Israel, the land of the victims, reached out its hands across the abyss of the past to Germany, the land of the perpetrators. And together, we, Germany and Israel, have built a bridge of friendship. Ladies and gentlemen, it is nothing less than a miracle that this friendship was forged. We Germans in particular are very grateful for this. Today, as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of our diplomatic relations, we are celebrating a friendship that was simply inconceivable at the end of the war 70 years ago. Three generations later, our children enjoy this friendship. It gives them pleasure and they are curious about each other. What has happened is that Germans and Israelis have grown dear to each other's hearts. The political seed courageously planted by one of the fathers of the State of Israel, David Ben-Gurion, and the German Chancellor Konrad Adenauer has flourished. These visionaries saw the way to build a future for their respective countries out of the ashes of the Second World War. Our generation will pass on their vision to a strong, optimistic generation of young Israelis and Germans. A, a generation of young people who critically question their own and each other's government policy. That is part of who they are and how we want them to be. Above all, however, it is a generation of people who are curious about one another and about the world around them, people who think and live in an international context. And in this context, it's now a particular honor for me to give the floor to a very special guest tonight, who we are happy to have among us this evening, 
the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Jan Eliasson, who will give us an international perspective of the unique friendship between Germany and Israel. Please. Council General uh, Wagner, thank you very much. Uh, Council General Haroni, uh, Ambassador Brown, Ambassador Prosser, dear friends, Executive Director uh, David Harris, another friend, Excellencies, uh, dear honorees and artists that we will meet later, uh, colleagues and friends. I'm uh, deeply honored and to join you this evening at this very special and very moving commemoration. I thank the permanent UN missions and the Consulate General of Germany and Israel, as well as the American Jewish Committee for organizing this celebration of a remarkable and of an inspiring relationship. That Germany and Israel <clears throat> have forged this friendship, overcoming unfathomably deep divisions sends a profound message of hope to societies riven and divided by hatred and conflict around the world. We see too much of this these days. It's a message of hope that reconciliation can be a liberating force and in the end become a reality no matter how deep the wounds are. This is true for all conflicts and for all historical processes. And by that, it also becomes an encouragement for efforts to end conflicts, to seek peace. Also, to think of these days between Israelis and Palestinians. As the Consul General said, no conflict is there to stay forever. There was a time when the horror of the Holocaust would have made normalized relations between Germany and Israel unimaginable. Yet, here we are today, marking 50 years of diplomatic relations and friendship between the two countries. A relationship that has grown to encompass vibrant and substantial political, social, cultural, scientific, and economic exchange. At the same time, we should recall and we should be reminded of the fortitude and the perseverance that we need to have to protect and nurture reconciliation. We must stand firm in a turbulent world and relentlessly counter and strive to eliminate prejudice, racism, and anti-Semitism. As we celebrate this remembrance this evening, let us look forward to another 50 years of strengthening and closing, closer friendship between Israel and Germany. I would say, from the bottom of my heart, this is a friendship that truly embodies the vision and the aspirations of the United Nations. I thank you very much for your attention. It is now my distinctive pleasure to ask Ambassador Ron Prosser, the permanent representative of Israel to the United Nations, to come to the lectern. Consul General Wagner, my friend and calling, Ambassador Ido Aroni, our Consul General, uh, Ambassador Harold Brown, Deputy Secretary General Jan Eliasson, and uh, my good friend David Harris. I'm really both emotionally and uh, personally privileged to be uh, here with you because I think. Uh, this is a really a special day. It is fitting that we are conducting this evening 
in a museum, a place where you can step back in time to explore the past and learn its lessons. This month marks 70 years since the end of the Second World War. The fact of the matter is that Germany and Israel will always be linked by the memory of the Shoah. The Holocaust left wounds that have not healed until this day. I'm honored also to address you in this remarkable occasion of 50 years, where 50 years ago when the first ambassador from Germany arrived in Israel, he came to a country deeply suspicious of anything German. Today, we celebrate the relations between our countries as the warmest of friends. The relationship between our two countries will always be shaped by difficult memories. Difficult memories of the past, but tonight we look back on five decades of cultural exchange, joint research, trade and technology, political solidarity, and look forward to a more productive future. The future is possible not because we have agreed to forget the past, but because Germany has insisted that it never be forgotten. Israel and the Jewish people will always tell, us, tell our sons and daughters of the darkest chapters in our history. This is our obligation to ourselves and to the victims. This partnership, this unlikely friendship, is possible because of what the German people have taught their sons and daughters about this part of their history. On a memorable visit to Israel, Chancellor Angela Merkel remarked, I most firmly believe that only if Germany accepts its enduring responsibility for the moral disaster in its history, we will be able to build a humane future or to put it in another way, respect for our common humanity is rooted in our responsibility for the past. There are many great historical and coloring sites to see in Germany, but as Israelis and Jews, the most important sites to see are how Germany has dealt with its past. We see a country in which Holocaust education is mandatory in every school. We see a people who have looked at themselves in the mirror and truly searched their soul to eradicate the prejudices passed down to them from previous generations. We see the amazing sight of a German chancellor at a public rally in the streets of Berlin, firmly declaring, and I quote, Jewish life belongs to us. It's part of Germany's identity and culture, end of quote. The result is that Germany, that Israel and Germany have found common ground in common values. Today, our two countries are connected by close political, economic, cultural, and social links. I'm confident that in the coming decades, our friendship will grow even stronger. Ladies and gentlemen, this evening, we honor a woman who has devoted her career to strengthening the partnership between Israel and Germany. Katharina von Münster is the communication direction of Action Reconciliation Service for Peace, Aktion Zündzeichen. She understands that while Germans and Israelis speak different languages, we can share the common language of reconciliation. Katharina, you have been so successful in your work that I think you should turn your efforts a bit to the United Nations. <laughs> Maybe, Jan, she'll be able to keep us and work in a united manner. Thank you for everything you've done. And uh, Harald, I have the honor, the privilege, to introduce you as the next speaker. Not only are you Federal Republic Ambassador here to the United Nations, but you're a true friend. We created a 
less damage when we both served in Washington, D.C. Since then, you've gone to serve as the number one diplomat in your foreign service. You're a true friend, and I am really happy to have you here celebrate with me 50 years of Israeli-German relationship. Thank you. Shalom lekulam, guten Abend, and good evening. It's not a simple task to speak after Ambassador Ron Prozor, who is not only a formidable representative of his country at the United Nations and a loyal friend, but he's also what we call in German wortgewaltig. But since this is not a beauty contest, I'll make an attempt. <laughs> Mr. Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear David Harris, it was the American Jewish Committee that first sought contact with Germany after the catastrophe we call Holocaust or Shoah. The AJC pinned its hope on the new Germany becoming a democratic and reliable partner for Israel and Jews worldwide. To this day, this hope and trust fills us with immense gratitude and pride. At the same time, it entails a great responsibility, a responsibility to never forget to speak up against all forms of anti-Semitism, against racism and xenophobia. And it entails a responsibility to stand up for Israel's security and Israel's very existence as a democratic and Jewish state. Chancellor Merkel, who was quoted earlier tonight, called this commitment Germany's raison d'etat when speaking before the Knesset in 2008. By spearheading this difficult effort, the AJC laid the groundwork for the occasion we are celebrating today, the establishment of diplomatic relations between Israel and Germany 50 years ago. And for the past 50 years, the AJC has continued to be a key partner for Germany in its dialogue with American Jewry and in our transatlantic relations. Over these past 50 years, and in the words of Foreign Minister Steinmeier, a human miracle has taken shape. Today, Berlin is the fastest growing Jewish community in Europe, with approximately 20,000 Israelis living there alongside German Jews and Jewish immigrants from other countries. Jewish schools are being opened, synagogues are being built, Berlin and Potsdam are home to Jewish colleges, and rabbis are being ordained in Germany again. The AJC has been playing a key role in helping the Jewish communities in Germany to thrive. In 1998, the AJC opened the Raymer Institute in Berlin, further strengthening its pioneering work in German-Jewish relations. It is the AJC's dedication and hard work that have made this miracle happen. One of AJC's flagship programs is promoting the exchange between the Jewish community in the United States and the German people. In April of this year, the unique AJC Konrad Adenauer Foundation Exchange Program celebrated its 35th anniversary. Over the years, thousands have participated in this program, building understanding through personal encounters. It is through these exchanges that Israelis, Germans, and American Jews can remember, discover the traces of our fateful history, and shape our future together. 
you have to light the future, was the AJC's motto on the occasion of its centenary in 2006. Approaching Germany after the Shoah was guided by this very idea. It is obvious that no other institution could be more deserving to be honored for its immeasurable achievements and its unwavering commitment to the betterment of the relations between our three countries. To be honored on this 50th anniversary day of diplomatic relations between Germany and Israel. Representing the American Jewish Committee as our honoree tonight is my dear friend David Harris, Executive Director of the HAC. He joined the organization more than 35 years ago, I would say straight out of kindergarten, <laughs> and he has been there with only a brief absence to take a position at the National Conference on Soviet Jewry. Since 1990, David has been the HAC's executive director, and he has since led and represented this great institution with a firm and steady hand. David, I can only bow in gratitude and respect for the decades of hard work you have put into bringing ever closer the relationship between Israel, Germany, and the United States, and hopefully for making our future a brighter one. Thank you, David Harris, and thank you, everybody here tonight. And now, as we are um, getting ready to um, conclude the program with remarks from our dear friend, whom we all admire here in the room, David Harris, it gives me and my colleague, Consul General Britta Wagner, a great pleasure to uh, bestow this honor upon you, Katharina von Münster. Please come to the podium and be recognized. You receive this on behalf of both governments. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Ein wunderschönen guten Abend. Good evening, Ewaf Lekulam. I'm really so excited, so nervous, almost overwhelmed um, to be here tonight and have the honor to stand here before you tonight and say a few words. But I really want to dedicate this honor that was bestowed upon me tonight to all the individuals and civil society groups that have actually made this German-Israel relationship as special as it is today. Because we wouldn't be here, standing here tonight, if it hadn't been for the many hundreds and thousands of individuals and groups who've dedicated their lives, who've dedicated their work to rebuilding, to building relationships between Israel and Germany. And I'm working with Action Reconciliation Service for Peace. We started our work in Israel in 1961, a couple of years actually before diplomatic relations were established. And we wouldn't have been able to send our first group of young Germans to Israel if it hadn't been for people like late Jerusalem Mayor Teddy Kollig, whose family, as you probably all know, also had to flee from Austria when the Nazis came to power and anti-Semitism rose in Europe. But despite that, he reached out to us and he enabled us to come to Israel with the first group of Germans in 1961. And many hundreds and thousands have followed and people like the father of Ambassador Prosser, Uri Prosser, and many other survivors and refugees of the Holocaust, they have opened their doors and their hearts to our young German volunteers. And it wouldn't have been without these people that we would have this strong and unique relationship that we have today. We always speak about the miracle that's happened, and it really is a miracle, but it's also a miracle that was possible only because of the contributions of so many Germans, Israelis, and also Americans. The AGC was mentioned here already, and I'm so honored that I'm able to speak here right before David Harris will address you. And I want to end my, my personal remarks uh, on, also on a very personal note, because for me, standing here tonight, is also a kind of a miracle. I was born in East Berlin when the Berlin Wall was still standing. So that meant that I grew up 
under a communist regime that did not take any responsibility for Germany's Nazi past. I grew up under a regime that did not recognize the state of Israel, that saw actually Israel and the United States as its worst enemies. But here I am standing tonight in New York City. The Statue of Liberty is just, you know, I don't know how many feet away. And I've had the privilege to work and live in Israel for nine years, first on the kibbutz, as so many Germans have done, and later with action reconciliation. And I actually met my husband also in Israel, who's also East German, and through his work with the Adenauer Foundation has contributed to German Israel relations in his own way. And I've had the privilege now to work and live here in the United States for four years with action reconciliation, and we are very privileged to host a program that was already mentioned, Germany Close Up Now, that brings about 250 young Jewish Americans to Germany every year. So we are continuing this dialogue between Germans and Jews, Germans and Israelis, talking about the past, but also looking towards the future. So I really want to dedicate this honor here tonight to all these people that have been involved in building this um, relationship. And I want to encourage all of us that are here tonight to continue to grow this relationship, not only between Germany and Israel, but really between Europe, Israel, and the United States. So to Daraba, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, Katharina, you left your honor right here. <laughs> Sit down. Um, you know, uh, the word miracle was mentioned here tonight several times, and miracle usually is being, we use the word miracle when there is no explanation to this thing that we're seeing happening in front of our eyes. But I think in this case, there is an explanation. There are people that devoted their lives to build those bridges, not just between the Israeli people and the German people, but between the Jewish community in the United States and the rest of the world. David Harris, our, our second honoree continues a long tradition of Jewish leaders from Theodor Herzl through Chaim Weizmann all the way to today's leadership that were able to open doors and capitals all over the world and faithfully and genuinely represent the communal interest of the Jewish people. David Harris is a dear friend of mine and of Ambassador Pursors and every major diplomat in New York in fact, in the world knows him. He is the de facto, the, the foreign minister of the Jewish people, believe it or not. And uh, David, it gives us a great honor to invite you as the current leader of AJC, and you just heard about the history of AJC making this, uh, this dream into a reality. So please, David, come forward and accept the Outstanding Achievement Award bestowed on you tonight. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, my name is Herren. Erev Tov Lekulam. I stand before you as a child of survivors who could never have imagined this moment. Having been raised in a home in which, other than speaking with his own parents, my father refused to speak German. My family refused to buy German products. And my family believed that this ocean and this Statue of Liberty which welcomed them was not wide enough from the Europe they had left behind. But I stand before you as well as a young boy of 11 who found himself living in Germany with those very same parents unexpectedly and discovering at a very tender age the complexity of German-Jewish, German-Israeli relations. And it's perhaps that time living in Germany that helps explain why I'm so proud to represent AJC here tonight as the organization that partnered with Israelis and Germans in order to achieve the miracle 
that we celebrate here at the museum. In the presence of so many dear friends, I would use up all my time if I spoke about each one in the front, front row individually, but all are dear friends. But most of all, I want to dedicate my few minutes to two people. Konrad Adenauer der Alte and David Ben-Gurion. They've been mentioned here this evening, but I think they need to be revisited. Because I think in the lessons we learn from Adenauer and Ben-Gurion, there are also Jan lessons for the future. This relationship was not destined to happen. In fact, left to others, or left perhaps to public opinion, this relationship might have been delayed for many years to come. Let's not idealize or romanticize what happened. In engaging with one another, Konrad Adenauer and David Ben-Gurion took a giant and courageous leap into the unknown. And every step of the way, for both, was faced with challenges and risks and uncertainties. The story began not in the 1960s, but in the early 1950s. It began around the issue of what became known as the Luxembourg Agreements of 1952 and what inspired it, that German word which we avoid, Wiedergutmachung. Because to us, the notion of making good is not what the discussion was really all about. But even engaging in those issues of reparations and indemnification at the time, there were many in Israel, symbolized by Menachem Begin, but it went far beyond who actively resisted the efforts of David Ben-Gurion to sit, or to have Israelis sit with their German counterparts. There were violent protests, tear gas was used, barbed wire was brought in, all because of the unwillingness of many Israelis seven years after the Shoah to even consider any discussion with the Germans, much less any discussion that involved money, which could be interpreted as blood money, a way of salving one's conscience by finding the right price for the survivors. And, to be fair to the record, not everyone in Germany supported Konrad Adenauer either in his determination to write a new chapter in German history, understanding that the real test of the Federal Republic of Germany would be not only its commitment to broad principles of human rights and human dignity, but more specifically, its relationship to its past, the Shoah, and to the survivors and the embodiment of the survivors in the living Jewish state, reestablished in 1948. And then when Israel, David Ben-Gurion in particular, said in the mid-1950s, maybe it's time to go a step further beyond the Luxembourg agreements and talk about diplomatic relations, Germany was not enthusiastic about the idea because then the notion of the Holstein Doctrine generated fear in West Germany that if it recognized Israel, the Arab world would recognize East Germany and undermine the West's claim to represent a unitary state. In the early 60s, Ben-Gurion and Adenauer, as Ido, you said, met at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel, and five years later, we marked the occasion. But even when Rolf Pohls, the first German ambassador, came to Israel, he was not greeted with flowers and chocolates alone, but rather with reminders of his Wehrmacht past and questions about how a German diplomat could live and work on Israeli soil. And by the way, when 
Ambassador Ben Natan, the first Israeli ambassador, came to Bonn. There were many questions raised among Germans about his past in the defense ministry and in issues of military transfers, which Germany, becoming increasingly pacifist, objected to. And yet, Adenauer and Ben-Gurion persevered and persisted and developed a relationship that, yes, overcame Germany's new pacifism, too. And I salute the memories of Ben-Gurion and Adenauer, not only because of what they themselves achieved for their respective countries, the Federal Republic and Israel, and not only for the 50 years of diplomatic relations that we celebrate tonight, but I celebrate them because in today's world, where are the leaders with the vision and the courage to take us to places where we need to go, and yet so few are willing to take the difficult road ahead, to know that they have to overcome the hurdles and the challenges before them. But I assure you that in today's world, the challenges that leaders face are no more insurmountable than the challenges of Ben-Gurion and Adenauer just a few years after a crime that Winston Churchill had said was a crime without a name. And so as I look to the next 50 years in German-Israeli relations, I don't see it as being an automatic pilot. I don't see the roadmap as being already given to us. It's going to take visionary leaders in both countries to continue to sustain the notion of Stadt Raison, Raison d'État, on the part of Germany. It's going to take visionary leaders who continue to define new relationships, and not just geopolitically pragmatic relationships, though they are important, but relationships that defend human rights and human freedom and human dignity, which are the DNA today of both societies. Leaders that will defend the integrity of history against those in the years to come who will challenge the facts of history, the incontrovertible facts of history, those who would deny or trivialize or rationalize the Holocaust. It will take leaders who say Germany and Israel together have a special obligation to create a watch against genocide, against all forms of racism and xenophobia, and more broadly beyond the German-Israeli relationship, we need more leaders more leaders, Jan, to deal with the otherwise seemingly intractable issues that make our world today such a beautiful but dangerous world. We need more Ben-Gurions, we need more Adenauers. So it's to the memory of Konrad Adenauer, it's to the memory of David Ben-Gurion that I stand here tonight in order to say thank you to them for making it possible. On the Jewish holiday of Hanukkah, we play with a little dreidel, a little spinning top that has four letters. The letters stand for the Hebrew words nes gadol hayasham. A great miracle happened there, referring to ancient times. If I may, I would change the letters on the dreidel to nes gadol hayapo. A great miracle is happening here. We're witness to the miracle, but being witness is not sufficient. Each of us, I believe, should leave here this evening with a sense of responsibility about what it is that each of us can do, our countries, our institutions like AJC, and individuals to shape the next 50 years of our world. Thank you and good night.
would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support JBS, the Jewish Broadcasting Service, with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double high or more, to the nonprofit organization Jewish Education in Media. Simply visit the JBS homepage and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please, indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check made out to GEM, to GEM, Post Office Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.